Hello world, it's Will. It's a lovely sunny day today, so I've come out in the garden to film this. It's been a while since I made a video, so I thought I'd make one with some updates. First of all, I've designed some circuit boards uh, for the Retro Brew Computers project, and I thought I'd show those. So the first one is a three-slot backplane. This is based on a um, the eight-slot backplane, which is a great board, but I find it slightly too large. So the three-slot backplane has three uh, ECB or Eurocard bus connectors. It has a socket for power, it has a power switch, a power LED, and it has a socket for a reset button. And I've put on the back, um, I've labeled all of the um, pins so you can easily find the pin you're looking for. And I've put a key on so you know what all the pins are called. So these boards are, I've done a production run of these and I've got loads of people who are interested in buying them. They're about four pounds each. Um, I'll show you an assembled one. Here's an assembled one. So there's the three sockets that you plug cards into. There's the power socket, the power switch, and the reset input. And you put some capacitors on for decoupling. Um, and I like to put on the bottom of my um, boards, I like to put on my backplane, sorry, I like to put these little 3M bump on so that when they sit on your desk, they don't scratch your desk. So this is the second PCB that I've designed. It's the ECB USB FIFO, and it gives you a fast uh, interface to a PC over USB for um, ECB computers. Um, the USB interface is implemented using an FTDI FT232H. Um, on the PC, it looks like a serial port or for Windows people, a, a virtual COM port. Um, from the ECB computer side of things, it's very simple to use. There's a single register that gives you the status and a single register that you can read or write to send bytes over the USB connection. So it's really quite a nice card to work with. Um, for flow control, um, the, the card has a, the um, FT232H has a deep FIFO in each direction. So a FIFO is a first in, first out queue. So you can buffer up to a kilobyte of data in either direction to or from the card in the FIFO in the FTDI. And um, another nice thing the card has is it has interrupt support. So you can set which interrupt it will trigger on the ECB bus. And so if the FIFO is full, you can set the card up to raise an interrupt for the processor when the FIFO, when either of the FIFOs are empty, and then you can go off and do something else. And when the PC has drained the data over USB, you'll get an interrupt to tell you that there's um, uh, the space in the FIFO. Um, the um, in practice, the USB interface is very fast, and so I think most of the time you're you're not going to fill the FIFO. The um, data rate I've measured through this is about 700 kilobytes a second in either direction. So it's a nice, uh, fast interface. And importantly, it's very easy to configure. There's basically no setup required to use it. And all the parameters you're used to setting on serial ports, like you know board rate and number of data bits and things, those are all essentially ignored by the FT232H in this mode. It just provides a clean 8-bit data path in and out of the machine. So quite a nice card. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, I've done a production run of these circuit boards as well. So if you're interested in one of these circuit boards, they're about five pounds. Actually, very quickly, while I've got these two cards here, I'll just show you how these cards plug into the Eurocard bus. There we go. They slot in like that. A gentleman called Robert from Thailand has very kindly sent me a printed circuit board that he's had fabricated. This is a SBC 188. It's uh, uh, designed by uh, the very talented John Kaufman, and it has a ASO 188 processor um, a floppy drive controller, some ROM, some RAM, a serial port, an 8255, which drives um, a parallel interface here. So I'll probably put a compact flash card on that. And it's got a Eurocard bus interface here, so it can talk to ECB cards. So as well as the 80188 board, I've also ordered some more boards to build another x86 system. Um, this one is going to be um, a, essentially a PCX, a slightly enhanced uh, IBM PC XT. Um, here's the first board. It's a, I can get this camera to focus, focus, thank you. This is a micro ATX sized ISA backplane. So it has eight ISA slots and it has some logic for driving a display that will go here, uh, which is the power on self test display. It's just a way of getting uh, a little bit of information out of the machine early on before video and things are working. 
Um, to plug into that, there's this board here, uh, which is designed by Sergei uh, Kizilev. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if I'm not. Um, and this is an XI8088. So this is an 8088 um, processor and most of an 8088 PC, basically. All of the processor and the memory and the timers and the interrupt controllers and the DMA control all on a single uh, two-sided printed circuit board. So this looks like a really, I'm going to the right way up, shall we? <laughs> this looks like a really interesting board. I'm looking forward to putting this together. And, you know, the really interesting thing about this board is that it'll run MS-DOS. And of course, there's an enormous wealth of MS-DOS software available. Um, it's using an 8088 uh, processor. There's also a pin compatible NEC part called the NEC V20, which is a bit faster and has the 80186 instruction set, which has a few nice instructions. The NEC V20 also has a really clever trick where you can execute a particular instruction and it puts the chip into an 8080 compatible mode, which is like a sort of, the 8080 is the chip that the Z80 is based on. Um, so it has a sort of 8080 compatible execution mode, which looks really interesting to play with. Um, but of course, with DOS available, the main target for this board is probably going to be playing Commander Keen. So um, I'm looking forward to building that. And there's some, I've got some other expansion boards that go with it. So this is uh, an IDE interface. So it'll have a 20 by 2 um, IDE interface here. It's also got a, a um, serial interface on it. So it's got a 16550 and a ROM, which will have the code in to, for the BIOS to talk to the... Um, IDE interface. I've got another IDE card here. So this is another uh, IDE ISA card, but instead of having a 20 by 2 connector, it just goes straight to a compact flash connector. And in reality, um, compact flash cards are what I tend to use for IDE storage. Um, this has a, a quite a fine pitch surface mount connector, which looks like a bit of a challenge, um, but not quite as challenging as this board here, which is going to be a VGA, um, a, or a super VGA, I should say, graphics card. This has a 160 pin uh, quad flat pack. I've never sold at anything quite so fine pitch or with quite so many pins. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge to see if I can build that. Uh, but when this is finished, that should be a super VGA card for the 8088 machine. And then I've got a couple of other cards for it. Um, this one is a uh, another serial port. It uses a uh, 16550, or I think I've actually got a 16750 to go in there, but in PLCC format, and it also has um, a floppy controller there. And then finally, this board here, again, a bit of a novelty for me because it's got some analog electronics on it. This will be a um, an OPL2 sound card, uh, obviously essential for playing uh, Commander Keen to get the music right. Um, so there we go. That's what I'm working on. Um, uh, um, 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 uh, let's do that again, shall we? That was a bit of a mouthful.